morning everyone or evening whatever it is um, not a whole lot has been happening lately uh, had a lot of personal stuff to deal with and uh, injured my hip and was laid up for a while and that kind of thing so um, haven't done a lot with the the van but then again there hasn't been a whole lot to do still waiting on the uh, on the generator the guy called me yesterday and said it was done and then I started driving up there and he called me back and said oh wait now it won't run again <laughs> so turned around and came home and I haven't heard anything I'm hoping he gets it done very soon because I'm leaving in less well a little more than a week and a half week and a half I'm gonna be driving away so anyway um, I'm here right now at Sleepy Hollow State Park which is somewhere in the middle of Michigan I uh, just drove here for the day it's only about 20 miles from my house uh, brought Frank with me because I want him to start getting used to being in the van and being on a leash and that kind of thing he was pretty upset the whole way here he's starting to calm down now that we've gotten here um, he's gonna just just gonna have to get used to to being in a moving vehicle uh, anyway before we head outside and wander around see what uh, see what's what because I've never been here before uh, I want to show you something a friend of mine made up some really cool screens for me um, as you can see there they got magnetic strips going through here and they cover the door completely so these windows are wide open right now and bugs can't get in I got the same thing going on over here the the ones in the corner don't hold very well because they kind of curved you know these magnets come in a, in rolls and so and they're not real powerful magnets they're just powerful enough to hold the thing up there but I also have one for this door there's velcro in here and it goes all the way around the door and so I can have the door wide open and have the velc have the screen in there I'm not putting that in right now because uh, if I do that in the time it takes me to put it up Frank will jump out of the vehicle and run so uh, I got him on a in a harness and on a leash and he seems to be okay with the leash as long as I don't pull on it because as soon as I pull or anything anything tugs on it he just sits won't move so eh, it's gonna be an interesting time but I think he'll get used to it so with with that we go well as you can see Sleepy Hollow is a pretty nice state park it's on a lake there's boating I think there's a boat launch on the other side um, trails cabins there's a campground um, they got a whole beach thing going over there with the some kind of a I guess it's a dock, but it's for walking on, but not boats. I don't know what that's called, but I'm under a tree here. I found a nice tree to sit under, and Frank is not very happy. I feel bad for him, but this is the only way to teach him. He's not used to going places. I had planned on taking several trips throughout the summer to get him used to it, but the queen took so much more work than I expected that I never got the got the opportunity and now here I am it's basically now or never and I don't want to have to get him you know acclimated entirely on the trip obviously I'm not gonna be able to do it hundred percent today but it's better than nothing I guess um, he's an outdoor cat at home he comes and goes as he pleases he goes <laughs> I've gotten calls from people two blocks away who call and say is your cat lost but no, he's fine. So he's not afraid of the outside. He's just nervous about new places and not used to being on a leash. So he's gonna have just gonna have to get used to it, because I can't leave him behind. I just don't have a choice. So um, it's kind of hard for me to walk with him and film at the same time, because he's constantly shutting down. He'll walk for a while and then he'll stop and just sit down and won't move. So I kind of need both hands. So once I'm once I work with him for a little longer I'll put him back in the van and uh, come out here and take some better shots for you so yeah this is my first time out here I'm liking it it's pretty nice well folks I don't think it's gonna work today um, gave it a shot just gonna have to do it on the fly um, we had a pretty bad rainstorm before we got here so and it stopped right before we got here so you know what happens the humidity psh, through the roof and it's already pushing 90 and so the humidity goes up, the bugs come out. So it was really just kind of unbearable. You couldn't even walk around without bugs getting all over you. 
and yeah, it just it's just not 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 a good day. So gonna head home now and uh <laughs> Frank is still upset. Oh, what's the matter, Frank? Yeah, I know. It's okay. Hey, we're gonna go home. I know. <sighs> he hid under the passenger seat most of the way here. <sighs> anyway, I'll let you know. I think the next thing I'll record is when I get the generator back. It can't be more than another day or two. And then I'll show you me putting that back in. Oh well, we tried. See you later. Alright, I'm on my way to uh, St. Charles now to pick up my generator. The guy called me a couple days ago and said it was ready, so I, this is my first day off since he called me, so I'm going to head up there and get it. Um, he said uh, it needed to start with, it needed a new rotor, had a broken rotor, and then uh, after he put the rotor in, that was $1,000 on its own. Uh, he put the rotor in, tried to start it, wouldn't start, ran some other tests, found that the voltage regulator was go was bad, so he bought a new one, that added another 250 Uh, and then he called me and said, it's done, it's ready to go. So I, uh, started driving up there, and then, uh, he calls me back, I get halfway there, he calls me back and said, uh, something's broken again, it's not running now, so I'm gonna have to keep working on it. So I turned around and came home. And uh, he called me a couple days ago and said he fi figured it out and that the thing was ready. The control board had gone bad. Just spontaneously went bad. Uh, so that was another two or two or three hundred dollars. Uh, very expensive repair on this thing, but it's still less than I could replace it for. Um, I could have bought a new one for I think they run about 200 or 2,500, give or take. Uh, I might have been able to find a used one, but who knows if a used one would have been any better. They they don't like sitting around. That's probably what happened to this thing and why it went bad, because they sit around for too long and they just they go to pieces. It's amazing. If anybody out there has an Onan generator, make sure to run that thing at least once a month, because it is very detrimental if you don't. You wind up in my situation if you don't run it. Um, now, that being said, I want to clarify why I was so hell-bent on getting this thing fixed and why I gave up on Sleepy Hollow State Park so quickly the other day. I mentioned that the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that it had just finished raining when we were at the park, when we got to the park. It had just gotten done raining, so everything was really, really damp. And of course the bugs were out and that makes it very difficult to deal with very unpleasant and it was it was hot that day it was still pushing 90 that day and i was there with frank and it was his first time you know away from the house so he was upset and i didn't have the generator so i couldn't run the air conditioning and so i couldn't put him in the van and then go off and, and take pictures and that kind of thing because it was just too hot to leave him in the van and so I decided to just call it a day. Now, that right there is exactly why I want the generator so badly, because I want to be able to take Frank with me, but the windows in the van do not allow enough ventilation for me to leave him in there if the temperatures are any higher than like maybe 80 tops, maybe not even that hot, because uh, it would just get too hot in there. The van is like an oven. Um, so what I'm gonna do, assuming the generator is working properly, if it's hot where I'm going, I mean, I'm going to Georgia and Louisiana and Texas. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be hot down there, even though it is the end of summer. It's probably still going to be pushing 90 degrees down there. Um, if I leave the van for a while, for a few hours to go do something, and it's not plugged in somewhere, say if I'm in New Orleans and I'm parked downtown and I want to go explore the French Quarter, I can start up the generator and turn the air conditioning on and leave Frank in there with the air conditioning on so that he won't overheat. That little generator is probably only going to use maybe a half a gallon of fuel an hour, so I could leave him for four hours and only use two gallons of fuel. And I got a 35 gallon tank, so that's nothing. I have no problem. I'll, I'll take that deal all day long. <clears throat> 
so that is my thought process so it's about quarter to one now it's a nice cool day it's about 75 degrees so it's a perfect day to put that generator back into the van and work on a few finishing touches because this is my only day off between now and when I leave so I got to get everything done today uh, I'm gonna take the passenger seat out because that will just give me some more room I don't really need a passenger seat so I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna put Frank's bed there or maybe his litter box if I decide to have one and uh, that kind of thing so that is that and that's what I'm gonna do today okay so got home with the generator 1500 bucks but it happens so hopefully it'll last me a good long while I forgot to mention earlier that as of a few days ago my channel has officially hit 100 subscribers <laughs> yeah it's not a huge accomplishment but hey celebrate every little achievement right so 100 subscribers and uh, hopefully continuing to grow so anyway, now that we're back, I'm going to take the passenger seat out. There's a bolt right here. Looks like there's four, four nuts. One here, one here, and then two more to get this, this base out. And I've looked underneath and it's just, uh, these are just studs, not, uh, not bolts. So just take the nut off and the thing should come right out. This carpet just comes right up. And I think I'll put the litter box right here or whatever. So that's the next job. My dad showed up kind of unexpectedly to help me with the generator, so went ahead and did that before we did the uh, uh, the chair. So uh, here's the generator. Let's get her to start up. Runs great, power's great. Not too bad for 1500 bucks. Oh well, can't dwell on that. Uh, onto the chair. So now that I got that uh, chair out, uh, I wanted to fix the armrest on the driver's side. If you recall, it was hanging down like this. So I unzipped the back of it. You see it's got the zipper and looked in here and there's a bolt in there. All I had to do was tighten that bolt up and now it's working just fine. I love simple fixes. Also talking about simple fixes, check this out. I wanted to record my doing this but I did it like literally two minutes before I went to work, so I didn't have time. Check it. Oh yeah. The way this works is these little tabs right here, there's a spring inside here. And this is what's inside there. And as you can see, the spring goes, the spring goes inside there. And then there's a little, at the end of the spring goes down into that little slot right there. And then as you open the, door it sort of pushes on this this plastic housing and twists the spring as you open it and then when you let go it the spring pops back and keeps the door closed well over time that's what you end up with this plastic dries out and it cracks and then the spring loses its tension and the door won't stay closed so I just had to replace both of these on each side they were both broken in fact this the other side was even worse you can see how bad that was believe it or not these were $25 a piece so 50 bucks for two of these little bastards. That's obscene. But that's what you get with these low production things. You know, they, how many people do you think order these? I'm guessing not many. So that's why the price is so high. But it's fixed. The seal is good. I didn't have to put any adhesive or anything on there. I couldn't be happier with that. Everything is more expensive than it should be. But that's life. So... What's next? I'll have to look and see what's next. I don't even know. So next I'm gonna put on a different shower head. I bought a new one and put it on there, but it was exactly the same as the one that was the old one. And it just doesn't have very good flow. 
So I bought a different one, a better one. I'm hoping that flow will be better. I'm going to do that. Uh, and then uh, that might be it for the night. Yeah, I'm, I'm really actually sort of having to think about, see, what else needs fixing? What else? Is there anything else? You know, I've done so much, and I'm getting so close to the finish line that I'm actually having trouble remembering what else needs to be fixed. So uh, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, that's the next thing. All right. Okay, the shower head won't work right now because the mount, you know, to set the shower head in, uh, I thought was adhesive. It's not. It's got, you're supposed to put two screws in there. I don't want to drive screws through the, uh, the wall of the shower. So I'm going to get some kind of a real strong tape or something to stick it on there. Um, but just not today. I might not do it before I leave. I might just wait till later. Um, I don't need a whole lot of water to take a shower. So, uh, that's really all I can do today. Um, although there is one little thing I did. I put this little reminder label <laughs> on the steering wheel. Now what that reminds me of is the gray tank actually has two valves. It's got the dump valve and then it's got another valve that actually cuts off the pipes to all the drains. Now the reason for that is if you leave it open and just start driving whenever you accelerate the water backs up just from the momentum goes back and it goes into the shower and it comes back out and into the shower and it's kind of gross. Uh, and I forget to close that thing. Every time I start driving I forget to close it and I get dirty water into the shower so I put that valve there to remind me to close it so hopefully that'll help um, and that does it for today I'm gonna lay down some rugs for the trip so I don't have to be walking on this nasty carpet and then I just got to figure out uh, how to situate Frank's little needs and and that's it now uh, I don't think I'm gonna be ta making any more videos before I leave I'm leaving on Friday and I think this will be my last video until then. Now, I'm going to take video throughout the trip. Unfortunately, I do not have very much Wi-Fi, or should I say uh, mobile data available. I've only got 8 gigs on my plan, so I can't upload videos uh, from my mobile device. So in order to upload, I'm going to have to find decent Wi-Fi along the way. So you're probably going to be watching videos days after whatever I recorded actually happened. So bear with me on that. Um, I'll do my best to record and upload as often as I can, but I'm going to be camping, so I'm not going to be moving a whole lot. Uh, that being said, uh, thanks for everybody for subscribing. 100 subscribers is a bit of an achievement, I, I think. It doesn't exactly compare to Nomadic Fanatic's 83,000, but hey, you know, a journey of 1,000 miles starts with one step. So I've taken my first step, and we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, Take care, everybody. I'll see you down in Georgia.